Eric Darling here with Darling Data. Uh, of course, uh, I forgot to adjust my camera before I started recording, so we're going to make sure that we are crisp, clean consultants for this video. Uh, and I've been told that I should do this at the beginning when people are still watching. Uh, apparently, it's more effective. Uh, if you like SQL Server performance tuning content or just SQL Server informational stuff in general, uh, and you end up liking this video, you can, you can like the video and you can comment on it. Uh, you can also subscribe to my channel if you want to be notified whenever I, I, I publish these things. So uh, we're doing that up front this time. I'm not going to thank you for watching because you haven't watched it yet. <laughs> and, uh, in this video, we're going to continue on with, uh, they call that A-B testing in market research. Uh, in this video, we're going to continue with the theme of yesterday's, the last video. It's not really yesterday yet. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that was deep, uh, <clears throat> with f different ways to track changes in SQL Server. So in yesterday's video, we covered the fact that change tracking is one of the worst features that Microsoft has ever added to SQL Server, and uh, that change data capture was fantastic. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about how you can use temporal columns, not temporal tables. Temporal tables have way too many problems for me to, for me to say, yes, you should use them. Uh, but temporal columns can help you make this a little bit easier. Now, full disclosure, uh, just, you know, change data capture is a lot easier to set up for a table uh, because you just start tracking new changes and all that stuff. If you wanted to, like, add this to an existing table, especially if it's a big table, it could be painful to add these columns because you are adding not null columns with default constraints, which means a whole lot of data pages get written to. But if you have a brand new table or you're designing a table and you want to be able to track when data changed in that table, this could be a good way to do it. Uh, now, keep in mind, this, this of course, unless you're using soft deletes, this will not change when something got deleted. You know, soft deletes will track like when the change happened to a row, like when you change is deleted from zero to one. Uh, but this will, not like if you delete a, a row out of the table, this won't check that, this won't track that you would need something more robust like change data capture. But if your only goal is to figure out when a row got modified, this is a pretty good way to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, drop this table if it exists and then also create this table. And this table is going to have all of the hallmarks of a table with uh, for the, that, would, that would be set up as a temporal table, but there's no history table for it. We're not assigning a history table. We are adding two columns to it that you need to have, but pay, this, is, this is really important. We're gonna talk, talk about two important things at this juncture. One, we have this column called junk date, and we don't really need junk date. This, this doesn't do us any good. So we're marking this as hidden. We don't want this to show up in select queries. We don't need it. It's useless to us. The other thing we're gonna cover is this. So we have a default constraint on the column that we do care about that shows us when something was last modified. I have sysdate time here because this will help me know exactly when a row got into a table. Right? That's, that's, that's useful in some cases. In other cases, you might only care when a row changed in the table. If, that, if that's the case, you might not, it might look kind of weird and confusing to have a current time in that row or a current date in that row because that might have just shown up in there. We don't know if that's when anything actually happened or not. Uh, so you, if you, you want to know like, that a row actually changed at some point in time, having a current date in there might be a little confusing. Uh, what might be a little less confusing is if you put like a really old date in there, like 1900-0101 or something. So you could, you know, that obviously wouldn't tell you what, that the, when the row got into the table, that might just give you, you know, I mean, unless you're, you, you had a SQL server in 1900, in which case, share your time traveling secrets with me, <laughs> dear leader. Uh, <laughs> I, I have some ideas. One of them is called the stock market. Sounds like a winner. The other one is uh, becoming a credit card company. That sounds like a, that, that's another good one. Uh, that's, they get goals, you know? Uh, anyway, so these are the two columns that we have to add to the table in order to make this whole thing work. And then, of course, we have this period for system time, blah, blah, blah thing, because apparently that's just, that's just syntactically correct. So let's uh, stick some rows from the votes table into the votes track table. Uh, not a whole lot of them, just about a year's worth. 
and then we're going to look at what data um, ended up in there because, I don't know, it seems like a, a reasonably fun thing to do. And of course, this insert is taking its sweet time, even with a tab lock hint, screw you, SQL Server. All right, so uh, let's take a quick view of what's in this table. Uh, this is everything for vote type ID 7. And uh, you'll see that we have a last modified date over here of the day and time that I'm recording this. And since we have bulk inserted uh, this data in, these are all going to have the same value. If you were inserting like a single row at a time or like two or three rows at a time, they would all have the same value. But, you know, uh, this because it was just a big whopping insert, they all have this last modified date of um, uh, today, which is not yesterday yet. Very deep, very deep thinkers here at Darling Data. Uh, and so we got that, and that's, that's all well and good, right? We have that. So uh, let's look at, uh, so right now, let's just, let's just make a mental note that this is 2024, uh, 0801 at 1802 and 34 seconds, right? And now let's update the bounty amount column and set that to four nines, which is not three sixes, it's four nines. We're not, we're not being, we're not getting weird here. And let's look at what's in the table now. All right. So this is obviously incremented by however long I was talking for, because if we look at, you know, uh, the results of these two things, they will have slightly different times. So we, we did not affect vote type ID four, which still has a last modified date of uh, uh, 1802. And the last modified date for the, for the rows we did change is 1803. So this is another way of figuring out when data changed in your table. If you need to take that data and either, you know, audit it, be like, hey, this looks funny. It changed. When did it last change? Huh? Like, you know, you know it's not going to tell you who changed it. It's not going to tell you what the previous values were. So it's not really like good for like a data auditing scenario, but it is good if you need to take this data and put it somewhere else and you need to figure out, you know, again, sort of like we talked about with change data capture. Let's say you have a process that will look at this table every X minutes and look for data that has changed uh, since the last time it ran and put that data into another table. Maybe it'll aggregate it and do something else with it. But this is one way that you can figure out, hey, these rows changed since the last time this process ran. I need to take these rows and move them over. And it's kind of cool for that because, um, you know, it's not change tracking, which is the worst feature that Microsoft has ever added to SQL Server, uh, or at least, you know, probably top five worst features. Uh, again, I've seen that thing cause more trouble than, than, than it's, it, it, I don't know, it's, it's, it's just brutal. And um, yeah, so this is just kind of another fun way to do that. And uh, if I've used this with, with a few clients to help them with, you know, data movement processes, which, you know, uh, turned out to, they turned out to be pretty happy with. And happy clients is what I aim for, right? The, again, clients, the nice people who pay me to make these free videos. If you would like to hire me to not, to, so that you can support this channel and I can keep making free videos, uh, you, you, you know how to find me. Um, we already talked about liking and subscribing and commenting, so we can skip that part in case you forgot because some of you people are a little forgetful up here. Uh, but anyway, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. And I will see you in the next video, which will not at all be about tracking changes. It just might be about considerations for implementing soft deletes, which would actually kind of go hand in hand with this. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes, uh, I suppose. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll even see you there. Maybe you'll even decide to subscribe and get notified for when, when, when that video comes out. Because I, I promise you, you will learn something. I hope. I hope you will learn something. Or you will enjoy yourself. Or both. Lots of options. We have lots, lots of potential here. You and me, we're going to be together for a long time. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching.